I'm out here visiting my buddy Patrick with his 03 golf cart here. Now in a past video, we actually replaced the, li the lead acid batteries with a lithium battery, but it wasn't quite powerful enough for all the duty that Patrick is putting on it. So today we're gonna upgrade it to a much more powerful lithium battery. Here we go. Tell me a little bit about this golf cart. What is it? Uh, it's a 2003 Club Car DS. I bought it used. It had a uh, broken motor controller, so I did a core swap on it a long time ago. I'd say back in 2012. Uh, then there was running the original lead acid battery that I nursed as best that I could for as long as I could. And then I met you. And we were talking solar, and he says, hey, you know what? I think I have a battery for you. <laughs> and just progress from that. So I've been running on this lithium mining battery for about two years. Um, unfortunately, the motor draws more than 100 amps than the BMS is currently allowing to extract from the battery at one shot, which makes the battery go in overload protection and shuts off for roughly about five minutes. I believe the battery capacity is more than adequate for the golf cart, although I don't know what the top, you know, true range is. But the issue is, is the BMS just doesn't have the capacity to handle the motor load that this golf cart demands. For example, one adult, one child, you know, so let's call it about 300 pounds, it's fine. But the minute you add another adult or another child and you go beyond the weight, then the motor draws more amperage, which the BMS can't handle. The only warning that I do get is the motor controller will go into error mode and start beeping and then slow down to a crawl until it stops. So you literally have a five second window to pull over safely. Then you have to wait five minutes for the BMS to cool off and reset. And what's up on the roof? Uh, it's a 445 watt bifacial solar panel that I picked up for, well, dirt cheap. With the combination of lithium ion battery and this 445 watt solar panel, I've never had to plug this golf cart into a, uh, street power. And it's been keeping the battery charged fully ever since. That's awesome. So in between the solar panel and the lithium ion battery is a single channel MPPPT boost charge controller. Looking at it today, we can see the battery's at 100% state of charge, and it looks like it's just floating at 59 volts. So we have some cells that are up at 3.7 volts. Now it's not unusual for a BMS to have the high voltage shutoff at 3.7 volts per cell, but it shouldn't go over 3.65 volts in reality. We should set the charge controller a little bit lower. So now, while I'm out here and we're changing out the battery pack, I'll help Patrick out and we'll change the setting on this charge controller and bring it down a little bit. Now obviously the battery is still working after two years of doing this, so we know it, it, there's not an immediate danger, uh, but it will decrease the long-term life expectancy of the battery uh, because it's, it's considered abusing a lithium battery to float it up at that voltage. This is the app from uh, EG4 for the battery, BMS control, it uses Bluetooth, and uh, well, pretty much every day this is what I come to. Shut off. Ooh. All right, Patrick, what just happened? Uh, well, I think that we overloaded the BMS by demanding too much amperage. And the BMS said, yeah, that's enough. I'm going to stop now. I noticed we were getting some uh, surges over 100 amps. Yeah. Well, the motor control is rated for about 500. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we were hoping that 100 was enough. 
during normal driving conditions like flat and going downhill it draws like 30 going uphill it draws about 90 through grass it's between 110 to 200 depending on the conditions yeah so you get a second or two yeah and out then, of it and then it shuts off and then that's the end of it okay still very impressive for a 100 amp bms uh, on this uh, first generation uh, waterproof 48 volt battery uh, but we are going to upgrade that today we're going to be putting in a battery specifically made for golf carts that has a 200 amp bms and allows surges over that so hopefully that will take care of all these issues after we get the install done we will come around and do the same track again hopefully the results are better all right patrick here's the new battery for you well wow, actually this one's a little bit bigger capacity yeah. The other one's 5.125. Yeah, the other one is a 100 amp hour. This is 105. 105. I tested the capacity at home and we were able to meet the specifications. This is the very first cycle on this battery. I haven't done anything to it except charge it up. And this is the very first discharge test. It says here 105 amp hours. Now we're discharging it. Uh, pretty high, about 50 plus amps. We're running it through this Victron Smart Shunt. That's how we're measuring it. And we're almost done. You can see we've got 43 volts left and we're up to 60 amps now. We started around 51 amps. And so this whole thing is taking just two hours or a little shy of two hours to discharge. And we did it. We hit 105 amp hours, 5.3. That beeping is Right here, 5.4, 5.4 kilowatt hours. That is excellent. So that is a phenomenal test for the first round. Wow, we hit the specs on the very first test right out of the box. That is great. This is the 12 volt power supply. It takes the 48 volts from the battery and produces 12 volts for running accessories such as lights. It's been fun. Now this is the first generation of the EG4. The newer version of the EG4 actually does have a larger BMS. So with the old battery, it had a plastic case. So we added a little steel reinforcement. The new battery is an all steel case. So I think we can get rid of the angle iron this time around. The way this golf cart is built, it has two large aluminum I-beams running down at an angle. So you used to have a lead acid battery sitting here. Since the lithium is larger, uh, we set it on the flanges on each side and it looks like we're gonna clear. So at this point, what I'd like to do is drill and bolt uh, into a couple of spots here. Make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, we've got our holes drilled. There we are. This is with it bolted in place. Yeah, the whole golf cart's moving. <laughs> We're building a little mount to hold the converter and the solar charge controller on this little piece of angle iron, and then we'll be able to mount that inside the frame. So now our converter and our charge controller are bolted to this angle iron. Now this is a boost charge controller. We need a boost charge controller because the maximum voltage of the panel is 49 volts. But we want to charge the battery up to 58 volts or I'll probably set it to 56. So we actually need to boost the voltage of the panel up to get to the voltage of the battery. Most charge controllers on the market actually buck it down. But this one will boost it up. Before we bolt this in, we're going to connect the solar panel up to the charge controller so we can adjust the setting. It should light up. All right. So right now it says 60. Press and hold until it flashes. There you go. Okay. There you go. You keep hitting until you see the battery voltage you want. 860. 24, 36, 48. So we want a 48. And then press and hold. Mm -hmm. 
48. Good. So these came with the battery. Let's pull them out and check them. It's like Christmas. Ooh. Put it right there. <laughs> yep. I like it. And I'm assuming that it gives me the state of charge when the battery's on? Should, yep. And that uses uh, RS-45 communication to the battery port? Yep. Nice. On the side of the battery, we have that plug go here and we'll race this up to the front and get ourselves a little dashboard display. charger came with ring terminals so we can attach this to the battery and this side could be left undone so you could take the charger inside the house this is a waterproof charger so you could leave it out here attached somewhere in the golf cart and then just uh, connect up your uh, power lead there this is for uh, 110 correct this bag of accessories came with the battery so we've got a bunch of different uh, length bolts so if you're Piling up a lot of ring terminals, you use a longer bolt. Or if you have just one ring terminal, you could use a shorter bolt. So I appreciate that they sent some longer bolts for us. They also have some rubber boots to go over the wire end. So this is a demonstration of what you don't want to do. The main power wire is the big fat ring terminal. And then we've got the two smaller ring terminals for the uh, charge controller and the buck converter. So we actually want to switch this around. You want the main power wire to go right up against the terminal of the battery. All right, Patrick, now that we just finished the installation, what'd you think? Pretty straightforward. Looks a lot cleaner than before. Let's go for a test. And we're off. 73. Wow. Okay, we're about to do the same grassy hill that stopped us last time. 154, and it's not killing. 134, 119, we made it up. Yeah, yes we did. Hey, yeah. we just made it up the hill, 154 oh. amps. Want to try it again? Hell yeah. Well, what do you think? Huge improvement from last time, you know. Now I can actually confidently have four passengers on here and know, know not the battery that is not going to uh, you know, cut out due to overloading and feel a lot more confident, confident taking this thing out and not worrying about it turning off. So this battery also has Bluetooth and this is what the Bluetooth app looks like. We're currently charging at 4.6 amps. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Thanks for bouncing around those hills with me. We bounced around there a dozen times and uh, the BMS never shut off on us. So it links in the description below if you'd like to check it out. Well, thank you everybody so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.